വിശാഖ എടാ ലൈവ് വർക്ക് ചെയ്യുന്നുണ്ട് കുഴപ്പമില്ല കേൾക്കുന്നുണ്ട് കേട്ടോ സ്വാതി ആ സർ മറ്റേ ബിജു സാർ ഒക്കെ ജോയിൻ ചെയ്തോ ഗസ്റ്റ് ഇല്ല സാർ ജോയിൻ ചെയ്തിട്ടില്ല സാറ് കാവ്യ പാർവതി രാകേഷ് ഇവര് മൂന്ന് പേരാണ് ഹോസ്റ്റ് ബിജു സാറിന് മെയിൽ അയച്ചിട്ടുണ്ട് ജോയിൻ ചെയ്യാൻ വേണ്ടിയിട്ട് ഇപ്പൊ മീറ്റ് ലിങ്ക് ജസ്റ്റ് ഒന്ന് മാറിയിട്ടുണ്ടായിരുന്നു അപ്പം നമുക്ക് പഴയ മീറ്റ് ലിങ്ക് അക്സസ് ചെയ്യാൻ പറ്റുന്നില്ലായിരുന്നു സാറിന് മെയിൽ അയച്ചിട്ടുണ്ട് സാർ ജോയിൻ ചെയ്യാന്ന് പറഞ്ഞിട്ടുണ്ട് ഹലോ ഗുഡ് ആഫ്റ്റർനൂൺ ഗുഡ് ആഫ്റ്റർനൂൺ സാർ 
Good, af good afternoon. Good afternoon, sir. How are you? Good? Do you see me? Do you hear me very well? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Very good. Uh, sir, are you covid thing? Hello? Hello? Uh, sir, are you okay with Zoom? Yes, I'm fine. Sharing it all? Yes, I can screen share. No problem. Okay, sir. Okay. So. Uh, okay. Do you see my screen? Yes, sir. It is Zoom. Sir, it is visible. It is visible? Yes, sir, it is. Okay, very good. So I am ready to start whenever you want. Let me know.
Good evening all. Hope you all are doing great. A warm welcome to one and all to the distinguished lecture program on security aspects of communicating vehicles by Professor Abdurrahim Benzmelin, IEEE VTS Distinguished Lecturer, IEEE Comsoc MMTC Vice Chair and Professor of Computer Science at Avignon University, France. The IEEE Distinguished Lecturer program aims at serving the community by providing stimulating lectures given by distinguished IEEE professionals and scholars. It also aims at helping young researchers, providing suggestions or guidance on their research problems, as well as promoting techniques among undergraduate students to make them interested in the respective fields. So, I invite Ms. Sajima Sandosh, Secretary, VTS SBC NSSE, for the welcome speech. Over to you, Sajima. Good evening to everyone over here. A warm welcome to all of you to the distinguished lecture program of IEEE VTS SBC NSSCE. I am overwhelmed to welcome Professor Abdurrahim Benzimeng, Professor of Computer Science at the Avignon University, France, IEEE VTS Distinguished Lecturer, who will be handling the session. I also welcome Dr. Ajay Babu, Advisor, VTS SBC NSSCE, who always extends his moral support and guidance in all the activities of the society. Next, let me welcome Mr. Bichu K. Treasurer, IEEE Kerala section, who has always backed our student branch chapter with his immense support. Welcome, sir. Last but not the least, I welcome Professor Vijita Manoj, Counselor, IEEE SB NSS CE. She is the motivating force and the source of encouragement to all of us. Her solid support blended with encouragement and incomparable motivation always have a positive impact on every activity of the student branch. It is a pleasure for me to welcome all the delegates of the event on behalf of IEEE VTS SBC NSS CE. Your presence is highly appreciable by all of us. I welcome all the participants in different categories who are excited to indulge in this wonderful lecture. I wish you all a very pleasant evening and a memorable time. It is our pleasure to host you all and to give you a platform to mo know more about the security aspects of communicating vehicles. Once again, I welcome you all. Thank you. Thank you, Sajima. Next, let me invite Dr. Ajay Babu, Advisor, VTS SBC NSSC, for the presidential address. Over to you, sir. Yeah, thank you. Respected Chief Guest and uh, Resource Person for the day, Professor Abdurrahim Ben Sliman, Dr. Biju K. Treasurer, IEEE Kerala Section, Professor Vijita Manoj, Counselor, IEEE Student Branch, NSSC, and the student volunteers and my dear participants. Good afternoon and warm welcome to this distinguished lecture program organized by IEEE VTS Student Branch Chapter of NSSC. The IEEE Student Branch at NSS College of Engineering has 10 Student Branch Chapters, one Women in Engineering Affinity Group and one Site Special Interest Group. The Student Branch has recently won the Daryl Chong Student Activity Award 2021 in bronze category for the Event Experience 20, a flagship event of IEEE Student Branch at NSSE. The VTS Student Branch Chapter at NSSE is the first VTS chapter in Region 10 Asia Pacific. As many of you might know, the IEEE Vehicular Technology Society, VTS, is an IEEE society with technical activities concentrated around three pillars. First, wireless communication, second, automotive electronics, and third, motor vehicles and land transportation. The VTS Distinguished Lecture Program is one of the largest in IEEE with approximately 50 world-class speakers ready to provide lectures to VTS chapters around the world. Today, it is our pride and prestige to have with us 
one such distinguished lecturer from IEEE VTS, Professor Abdur Rahim Ben Sliman, for the second DLP organized by IEEE VTS Student Band Chapter NSSC. I am sure all participants would be eagerly waiting to know further about him and to listen to his talk on security aspects of communicating vehicles. So once again, inviting all of you for a fruitful session ahead. Thank you. Thank you, sir. For introducing our honored speaker, let me invite Dr. Biju K, Treasurer, IEEE Kerala section. Over to you, sir. Thank you, uh, Dr. Ajay Babu, other faculty members from engineering, other attendees of this program. So it's my pleasure and privilege to introduce uh, Professor Ben Sliman before the August audience here. Professor Ben Sliman is a full-time professor of computer science at the Vigon University, France, since 2001. He is the Vice Dean of the Faculty of Science and Technology and heads the Master Program on Communicating Systems and Security at Alpinon University. He has been nominated in 2020 as IEEE BTS Distinguished Lecturer. He has the French Award for Doctoral Supervision and Research during the year 2017 to 2021. He has been recently an international expert at the French Ministry of Foreign and European Affairs. He served as a coordinator of the Faculty of Engineering and the head of the Research Center in Informatics at the French University in Egypt. He has attributed the French Award of Scientific Excellency from 2011 to 2014. He has been an associate professor at the University of Technology of Belfort, Montblanc since September 1994. And he obtained the title to supervise research uh, from the University of Sergi uh, Pontios, France. He served as a, uh, he received his PhD degree in 1993, MS degree in 1989, and from the French Pompeo University, Ben and a bachelor degree in 1987 from the University of Nancy, all in the field of computer science. He has been nominated as IEEE Comsoc VC of Multimedia at PC 2020 to 2022. He is past chair of the Comsoc Technical Committee of Communication and Information Security during the year 2017 He is EAC, Editor in Chief of Inter Science International Journal on Multimedia Intelligence and Security Systems. He is an area editor of security in IEEE IoT Journal. Editorial member of IEEE Transactions on Multimedia, IEEE Wireless Communication Magazine, IEEE System Journal, Elsevier Ad Hope Networks, Fringer Wireless Network Journal, and past area editor of YD Security and Privacy Journal 2017-19. So he is the professor uh, Pencilman is an art professor uh, for us today uh, to talk on our uh, the proposed uh, subject. So with much happiness, uh, I invite uh, uh, Professor Benzelman to handle his talk. Sir, over to you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much for this uh, very uh, nice introduction, Dr. Uh, uh, Beju. Thank you, Dr. Uh, Babu, Beju. about this uh, introduction also. Thanks to all attendees of this uh, talk. So, uh, I will move to uh, the next slide because this one you already introduced me about uh, my career and my professional activities. So and now let me go to the next slide. So in this talk, I want to organize my talk into two uh, parts. The first one is uh, monitoring in IoT networks. And by the way, it is also in IoT networks. And the second talk is more dedicated to security in vehicles. The first one is somehow theoretical. And I want it to be like this for in my talk. And the second one is more, uh, I mean, uh, feasible uh, uh, research and uh, developing. Okay, so let me start with the monitoring. 
what is monitoring? As you can see uh, in this slide, network monitoring solutions have become crucial today because so many companies are relying on their internet networks, internal networks and internet networks to be productive in their line of work. Network failure and irregularities, server downtimes, and uh, application crashes can seriously, seriously threaten the livelihood of a business, costing thousands, if not a billion or more dollars in revenue. So this is why in our research, we think that this is important to consider monitoring network. Okay, so why monitoring? I enumerated in this slide several uh, uh, points. We can start from identifying an official service or servers, monitoring usage and traffic statistics, investigating the security incident, keeping in real time logs of users' device, monitor closely the working lifetime of station device in order to decide a plan of for charge. Troubleshooting your networks, a recover app and failure immediately. So this is to fix a problem anytime, anywhere, etc. So the challenge that we can have in monitoring IoT are mainly due to the topology, which is usually changing over the time due to wireless dynamics the resource limited in embedded device and even if we are in a car it is also limited so we should be careful about the algorithms and the methods that we want to use in monitoring the presence of sleeping nodes in the iot it is important to have sleeping nodes so we cannot uh, do uh, whatever we want uh, with this nodes the density of the device in a single space can crash can reach hundreds of nodes. We can also consider vehicles in this uh, situation with a lot of sensors. There is a mix of fixed and mobile device and the presence of shared medium. So, and there is also IoT security risk. So, continuously maintaining the network states the network state and the availability of the elements in real time with energy efficient and dynamic algorithm this is our objective and we want to minimize the resulting overhead cost of the network to cope with the resource limitation of iot so our objective is energy to be used for computation to be minimal and the communication overhead to be also minimal. So we have uh, this constraint and this uh, limitation. We want then to have only few monitors to plus in the network in order to monitor the network. Okay. But before going on the our proposed schemes in this monitoring of IoT or IOV, let me first introduce you how to do monitoring. So everyone know that for doing monitoring, we have two, uh, two categories, active monitoring and the passive monitoring. Uh, active measurements rely upon data gathered from probe packet injected into the network. So this is uh, injected traffic. And the second one is passive measurements, passive relay up and data gathered from active network. So the first one needs some elements to be placed in the network and to gather the, the data from props. And the second one is only for overhearing. We overhear the network, the traffic, and then we can do some statistics or some uh, decision to consider so 
in the literature it have been uh, proposed several works to deal with monitoring we can have extensive work for wireless sensor networks before going to iot and to iop as i enumerated the two categories we have active and passive we can also have centralized distributed or hierarchical, hierarchical methods centralized means that we have only one central nodes which will with who will collect all the data coming from all the networks which is not scalable the distributed one is more interesting but usually it is also a problem how to do the convergence between all the uh, collected data and the hierarchical one means that we have centralized and we have some parts which are distributed. The third methods for monitoring is also uh, a new one or a theoretical one, which is tomography. So in tomography based monitoring, all required cooperation of nodes designated as a monitors can utilize performance experiencing by data packets to reduce the need of the active pro it to achieve scalability instead of measurement or output so we have several parts and on this path we will have some uh, equation for each part and the objective is to resolve this system of equation in order to have some quality of uh, uh, service that we call quality of service about all this uh, network parameters so we can have for example the delay we can have for example the bandwidth we can have uh, monitor all these elements in the network okay so whoever the buzzer the, the the main challenge of this method is that it is not scalable and it is not accurate even if it is important and on the other side we have intrusion detection systems that have been introduced for wsn using machine learning using data mining using statistical approach on also recently using game theoretical approach which are very different from what we want to do in uh, IoT. Here I, uh, I resume some uh, work on st uh, and state of the art in monitoring. So we consider, for example, in our work monitoring at the layer, uh, at the network layer, we can have monitoring wireless sensor networks or wireless IoT but uh, uh, in both cases we have proactive monitoring and reactive monitoring we have also passive and active monitorings and uh, in front of you you have some works that have been proposed in the literature what i want to say here is that in iot uh, there is very few works very very few works if not uh, in existence uh, algorithm or protocol for monitoring the only one that uh, uh, that is compared to ours is one also proposed from a team in Nancy in France I will uh, present this work uh, in the next uh, slide so uh, after this introduction to monitoring I want to uh, present you our work in a theoretical part and practical part on monitoring for IoT. Okay. So, firstly, we proposed one heuristic method, and after a uh, few months, we decided to complete our work with an exact solution because we haven't a benchmark to compare as i said it was only uh, a few uh, uh, works in this area and then we complete our work by introducing a new distributed and dynamic scheme i will go for the first one and i will uh, highlight the uh, solution that we proposed in the two other methods and I will give you uh, the reference of uh, our published papers if you are interested to uh, work on. 
So let me first, before going to uh, our work, very quickly talk about the context where we uh, proposed our monitoring methods for IoT. We want to start from a very uh, well-known uh, routing uh, protocols, which is RPL, which is standardized by IETF. This is in the RFC 6550. And in uh, this routing protocols, what is done is we have an IoT network with a border router. Border router is the node which will which will connect uh, to internet because we are in IoT. And as you know, with IoT, we have uh, IP address. I mean, more than IP, it is IPv6 address or light IPv6 address. So all the nodes should be connected to internet. So in this RPL, a routing protocol, we can save what we call DODAG, which is destination oriented acyclic graph. It is conceived from the border router, which in this figure that you have the node zero, this is the border router, and all the other nodes will, will connect to, to this border router as a tree. And all these nodes are connected in only one direction to the border router. This is why we are conceiving DODAG. Okay, so we have a tree, if you want, and on this tree, we would like to do our monitoring. Otherwise, if we don't use uh, RPL and this DODAG, we can use any other networks, and this is not conform with the standard. This is what we want. We want to be conform with the standard. Okay, so uh, in the slide in front of you, there are some messages that ha that are communicating between the border router and all the node in the network in order to conserve the DODAG. So there is uh, information option DO message that is broadcasted in order to conserve the, the, the tree for the communication between the nodes and the, the border router. Uh, I want to say also that uh, this is, I mean, RPL is very different from all the other routing protocols that have been proposed in the literature for wireless sensor networks or for ad hoc network. It is different because it can conceive uh, several instances of DODAG, I mean, several instances of three. Each instance can have its own objective function. The objective function is uh, an order given by the border router, for example, zero, to all the nodes, asking them to conserve the tree in a with a given uh, rank. For example, zero can ask all the nodes to conserve the tree while respecting the delay or while respecting the consumption of the energy or while, while uh, respecting the transmission uh, power, etc., etc. So we have an objective function that is defined by the, the border router for all the nodes. Let me, for example, start with the conception of this DODAG or this instance. So the node zero broadcast a DO message to all the nodes. All the nodes will uh, uh, take uh, node zero that are in the neighbors of node zero that will take node zero as the, uh, their parent, and we continue. If the parent allow us to uh, respect the objective function that is given by the node zero, we take the node parent close to the uh, border router. I mean, we will look behind us and see if uh, this path going to the border router respect this uh, uh, objective function or not. If it respect, for example, if it is the shortest path, I will take it. If it is the number of road transmission, I will take it. If it is, for example, the delay, I will, etc., etc. So this is why we can have um, 
different instance depending on uh, objective function. So here we continue displaying our algorithm or the Doda conception in the RPL, and at the end we will have the tree conceived in order to communicate with the, uh, with the node zero and send all the information. Okay, so this is uh, what uh, we have uh, as a conception of. So based on this tree, we will do our monitoring. Okay, so as I said before, the only one work that is that uses RPL for monitoring is one from uh, Nancy, from France also, and they propose to have uh, some nodes, particular nodes, which are seen in class C2. What is the class C2 in IoT? It is the class less constrained and fundamentally capable of supporting most of the same protocol stacks. I mean, they can do some execution, they can do some processing, they can do compare to other nodes which are class C0 or C1. C0 and C1 cannot execute any algorithm because they have very low, low resource. And this is in the standard of um, IOTF. Okay, so they propose to conceive uh, two uh, RPL instance, I mean two DODAG, the first one is dedicated to the monitoring, and the second one is dedicated to the communication between nodes and the border router. But they don't say how to place this monitor in the network, I mean in the DODAG. They don't design this, uh, this monitors, the positioning of these monitors. They don't uh, uh, use any, uh, I mean, any quality of service or any opt uh, uh, optimization for doing the monitoring. So it is the first, of course, but it is not very efficient. So this is why we proposed our work while using RPL and DODAG. So let me propose our uh, first heuristic method. This first work have been uh, published in IEEE journal, IA Internet of Things journal, and how to work. This is one heuristic because the problem is NP hard and we cannot, we cannot, of course, have uh, other, uh, other methods instead of heuristic. I will check with you later how to propose one exact method, but in a very uh, constrained environment. So given a planning horizon, uh, I have time, yes. Given a planning horizon denoted by T. So what we want? We want to monitor the entire networks during the day. So we cut the day, for example, into several planning horizon, which we call T, T1, T2. This is a period of time. And we want to monitor the network in this period of time, in this period of time, in this period of time. So this is our specification of the problem. We have several periods of time. What we want to do is to monitor during this period and then monitor during this period and then monitor during this period. So we have as data our DODAG, which is already conceived. This is the DODAG, which is already conceived. And the objective is to find the minimal subset of nodes to cover the, this DODAG in terms of monitoring. We have the monitoring schedule, the monitor schedulings. So we have a set of all the nodes and we want to take a subset of nodes that will monitor in this period. Another subset of nodes that will monitor in this period and so on. So we will have the, to monitor all the network during all the period of time. But what we want to do is to respect no more consummation. I mean, we will minimize the monitoring cost because this is only the monitoring cost. This is not the application of IoT. So we don't want to interfere on the application itself. So we will take only a part, a very uh, little part from the, uh, the energy from the battery and very little part from the uh, computing processing. Okay, so this is why 
we uh, want to schedule like this, I mean, in terms of period, okay? So this is an heuristic, as I said, and this is the positioning, this is the problem, how we specify this problem, okay? So in order to propose this heuristic, we propose to decompose the problem into three phases, okay? Three phases, because the problem itself is NP hard. The first phase is to conceive the subset of vertex who will cover the entire network. We call this in graph theory, vertex cover. And we want to find very uh, close to optimal ver uh, vertex cover set. This is the first step that we have, phase one. Then, when we have all the vertex cover seats, we will schedule or assign this vertex cover to the period of time. We don't want that the same vertex cover seat will monitor all the time because all the nodes in the vertex cover will exhaust their battery. So it is not good for us. We want to uh, load balance between the nodes uh, who will monitor the network, okay? So the second one is uh, this assignment of vertex cover to time period, and this is well known as a multi-objective generalized assignment. And the third phase is another optimization, which will allow us to take the nodes in consecutive way, okay? in order to not exhaust their energy while they are uh, transiting between sleeping and wake up cycle, because we are considering here IoT device. So this is a small, very, very small device, and we don't want to exhaust their battery if they are using, if they are doing the monitoring, okay? I hope it is clear for everyone, okay? Uh, okay, let me uh, go with the first one. The first one, as I said, is to minimize and balance energy consumption of the monitors. So we we uh, uh, conceive several monitoring seats, which we call vertex cover. Okay, and this is the formulation of uh, the vertex cover problem. Okay, we define a variable, this variable VK, is a variable which is equal to one if this vertex is chosen in the vertex cover otherwise it is equal to zero if it is not chosen in this vertex cover okay so and we want to minimize the number of vertex in the vertex cover this is the objective, okay? And we have these two equations. Let me go, because this is only uh, a very small, uh, I mean, easy problems to formulate, so I can go uh, fast on this. The second one is more important and interesting because we want to, as I said before, we want to assign the vertex cover, this vertex cover one, vertex cover two, vertex cover three, et cetera, just, uh, till vector, vertex cover M. We want to assign this vertex cover to the period of time. Okay, this is our objective. And then given a planning horizon, as I said, we want to assign the vertex cover. So any vertex cover, okay, uh, will monitor a period of time one period, okay? So we define several variable, for example, the variable SIG, which is a binary decision variable that indicate whether, whether a vertex cover VCA is assigned to monitor a period of time TG, okay? So it is clear. The objective function that we want is uh, this one, minimal of the total energy consumption. How to conceive this equation? Let me explain it. We have the energy consumed 
for monitoring per period, which is EM. Okay. We have also Y Ki, which is a binary variable decision, which indicate whether a vertex VK is a member of a vertex cover I. Okay, VK in the vertex cover I. And we will define the second objective function that is to minimize the total communication. So in this equation, we should have only the shortest path. This is why we define uh, this equation, like the shortest path, okay? So here we have HK, okay? which is defined and we will multiply each k by y ki okay so this is the number of hop traveled from each vki in vci to the root of the dodag as i said before we should have the minimal path to the root of the dodag so this is important to consider because this will count the number the communication the total communication Okay, and this is the total number of hops traveled by all VKI in VCI. The third phase, which is to minimize, uh, the, I mean, the, 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 the second step in the second uh, phase is to uh, minimize the consumed energy, and we want to exceed the reserved battery for a K for the monitoring because each node we will assign him a very succinct reserved battery for the monitoring and in all the monitoring process we don't want to accept this uh, uh, threshold of battery so this is important to consider otherwise we will exhaust the energy of the nodes while doing monitoring instead of doing the application itself okay so this is why we have this equation here and uh, this is why we calculate the number of time of vertex cover has been assigned to monitoring period okay and this is the battery this is the threshold that we don't want to exceed the last phase is the traveling salisment i mean the, the solution with the traveling salisment part what does it mean? Does it mean that a node can be in uh, sleep mode or in active mode? And this is the duty cycle for every IoT device. Okay, but what we don't want is that we will uh, frequently have these uh, cycles: sleep, active, sleep, active, and the transition or transient between sleep and active and active and sleep will cost a lot of energy. We don't want this, this is why we want to, when we have a node and it is involved in several vertex cover to monitor, we want to make it uh, contiguous for monitoring and then we stop with this node and we can select another node. This is why we have this, uh, uh, this solution here, okay? I mean contiguous mode. So we did a lot of, uh, equation in this model also like the other one but this is well known uh, well known problems and well known uh, solution of these problems this is why we considered uh, divide to conquer i mean as a solution here you have assignment vertex cover vc uh, 15 until vc uh, 11 i mean vc 11 vc 15 etc and what we want to do is to make them contiguous. For example, this VC11 will monitor from the period zero to the period four. And then there is VC13, which will monitor from period four to period seven, instead of making it very uh, 
uh, changing each time and each time we will consume a lot of energy so this is why there is a difference between this figure and the other figure because here we make it contiguous and here it is a uh, dirty cycle normal and we have wake up uh, sleep wake up sleep and it will consume a lot of energy okay so the experimental results that we did is uh, in front of you we have considered several several simulation and uh, here for example the proposed solution and uh, the proof have been executed between 50 nodes to 200 nodes and between 123 uh, to 2463 links of nodes and we um, we uh, variate the threshold and in term of this threshold we can measure the density of the, and the percentage of the monitors and we uh, found that in our methods we uh, have almost the same number of monitors even if we increase the threshold i mean even if we increase the density of the network and uh, as you can see in this this is the network that we considered in our simulation and there are a lot of nodes and uh 100 nodes and 235 uh, 34 links in this uh, figure so we have also uh, accomplished several other simulation for example in this simulation you have uh, the average residual battery and also you have the uh, instead of in terms of the number of nodes and in terms of the number of links okay and we have also uh, several other uh, uh, simulation like for example this one which is a table a summary table with uh, a threshold uh, i mean while giving a reserved battery equal to 50 percent and uh, the, the energy the minimal energy to be consumed is 202 uh, percent and the period of time we have 10 uh, period of time we have 10 period of time and here we have several instance of dodag between one and eight we studied several instances of dodag and for some all the times we have between uh, for example 54 percent of monitor till uh, the maximum is 63 percent of monitor or 66 monitors percent of monitor in all the networks and the consumption of the energy still remain uh, uh, minimal for monitorings so we don't accept the threshold that we defined it uh, earlier okay so maybe i can uh, conclude with these methods with these heuristic methods uh, to say that we uh, conducted several uh, several uh, mm, simulations and we found that our method is very interesting in terms of energy consumption in terms of computing in terms of uh, scalability and uh, as i said before it was uh, uh, one heuristic and we want to do uh, some things like uh, like um, exact solution so the exact solution that we proposed use binary integer problem program it formulate the minimum the amount of energy consumed in monitoring the seat of critical nodes and the communication of the monitoring data we use it also the same uh, like before uh, six low pan border router and we uh, compute i mean the exact solution for this problem in a very large size network and the result of this uh, work have been uh, published very recently in a, a journal of operational research the last one that i want also to mention is the dynamic distributed uh, monitoring for six low pain based on iot and here we are using uh, another method different from the pure previous one and we use uh, a simulator kontiki kuja for the network simulation okay so uh, here I conclude with this first part and I want to uh, thanks my colleagues that worked with me 
on this uh, uh, optimization for monitoring. Okay, so let me now go to the second part, which maybe uh, will be uh, more practical, but maybe also more uh, uh, interesting for VT, uh, VTS. So uh, here I want to start with the, the what flow. The Internet of Things is a global network connecting smart objects and enabling them to communicate with each other. Whenever those smart objects being connected over internet are exclusively, uh, or, or for example, uh, even if they are vehicles, we talk about internet of vehicles and we can also apply what we can propose in terms of monitoring. I will come back on this after. From manual diagnostics of uh, tire pressure, temperature, braking, uh, I am talking about the diagnostic. This is the manual diagnostic that we can have. We can have also automatic diagnostic, okay? And uh, this is in order to uh, diagnostic problem in a car. But there is also some other problems, like current vehicles are equipped, for example, with Wi-Fi access point, with Bluetooth modules, with cellular communication modules, gateway telematics, and dozen of electrical control unit, which we call AC. A modern vehicle, even if not fully featured, already has between 70 and 100 ACU, I mean, uh, electrical control units, with over than 2,500 signals to transmit internally. To coordinate all this exchange information between SEU in vehicle network, we have the bus CAN. CAN bus was primarily designed to reliable, to reliable communication without considering cybersecurity. Okay? So, in this figure that you have, we can distinguish several, several modules. For example, we can distinguish engine uh, control module, we can distinguish anti-lock braking system, we can distinguish body control module, I will come back on this element because we use them. And we can have also wireless transceiver. And what I want to uh, highlight here is that we can also use monitoring of all these elements. Monitoring all these elements, there are some tentative that started with monitoring this element with SNMP, for example, which is a uh, protocol to manage uh, probes and to uh, uh, check the elements in the network. So we can also use SNMP in house manager gateway application with radio interface etc okay so from the collection of sensor platform collect deliver sensor data to the drivers and internet cloud also should be uh, monitored okay so it is important to do this kind of monitoring let me quickly talk about what have been proposed in terms of monitoring, there is also a few work that considered monitoring for a cars. Here, we have, for example, a sample network management protocol, SNMP, framework that was proposed to implement and control off-board communication through cellular technology. The framework combines the characteristic of SNMP protocol with mechanism to access to tertial GSM. This is the first uh, work that have been done. To collect information for the system, vehicles are equipped with several sensors that collect information or speed, acceleration, steering angle, and air temperature, etc. So SNMP is employed to take the advantage of two class of location 
based on tracking and on mobility. The proposed uh, also they proposed an integrated wireless management system for monitoring that I have here in this uh, second. Okay, it allow the owner of the device to manage it remotely. The second slide is uh, also proposed for uh, monitoring. The name of the method is uh, uh, Guerrilla Management Architecture, GMA. It uses a cluster-based management mechanism and the set of mobile agents to create an autonomous use management environment. To accomplish this uh, goal, nodes that share the same characteristic are aggregated into a cluster managed by a nomadic managers. These managers autonomously collaborate with the network nodes to manage the entire network. The second, uh, the last techniques that I found for monitoring in vehicles is also MAN for VDTN, which is a SNMP based solution for VDTN that provides support to push data from VDTN nodes. In this solution, the network management system handles the communication between the network nodes using SNMP. Now, I will go to the uh, last work that we proposed. In this work, I mean, in these several works, we published this book with my colleague from uh, China, from Xi'an University, and now he is in Northwestern uh, Polytechnic University in uh, Xi'an. When I visited him in 2019, we started working, and before, but during the period, we started working on several realization on uh, cars in order to uh, do some uh, security attacks and then try to find the solution. So I want to say that previous report have illustrated highly practical wireless attacks on the core function of vehicles, which disengage engines and brakes. For instance, by hijacking the steering and braking units in a Ford Escape and Toyota Prius, researcher found that while a vehicle system is getting more advanced with appealing features, the system is also becoming a vulnerable target for attacks. In 2015, one that 4 million vehicles were subject for a recall by Chrysler because hackers could remotely take control of a Jeep's digital systems over the internet. In another, Report a team of hackers remotely hijacked a Tesla Model S from a distance of 12 miles. In a recent study, researchers have found 14 vulnerabilities in the infotainment system in several uh, BMW Bavarian Motors uh, workers. Moreover, car ha uh, hacking demonstration to that have always focused on a signal, uh, signal, signal vehicles, but the network nature of connected cars created numerous avenue of fleet wide attack, fleet wide attack. So this is why it is important to consider and to check how to uh, work with such future in the vehicles. Okay, so let me now present you our first work. I mean, we dedicate some attacks and we investigate some, uh, some vulnerabilities. Due to the inherent fragility of the automotive internal network and increasingly rich networking capability, the ICV, okay, are easy to suffer the threat from the networks 
according to the analysis that we got, we did, I mean, in ICV networking system architecture, as shown in this figure, we present three methods for of attacking ICV. The first one is in vehicle in infotainment system application. It uses the network communication vulnerabilities to attack in vehicles, infotainment IVA system application when it interacts with outside environments. The second method is to use the OBD diagnostic tools to send malicious packets. There is my, my to send malicious packets. It's OBD to send malicious packets. Okay. To the CAN buses. This is the CAN buses. Okay. to the OBD interface, OBD to interface. So OBD, as you know, is onboard diagnostic interface. Here we have the onboard diagnostic interface. And the last one is the telematics. I mean, the third method is to use the telematic box, T-box, okay, and TSP, TSP. telematic service provider loophole to control automa automa automobile behavior. So we did three, these three attacks. We use it, uh, the BCM, I mean, we use it, the body control module. We use it also the K control unit and we use it, the onboard control module for attacking several parts in the in-vehicle components that will allow to uh, make it very vulnerable. All these attacks have been done on in vehicle network of modern ICB, which is a luxe gen, which is Taiwanese car manufacturer, SUV, which is a sport utility vehicle. So we did the experiment in the luxe gen SUV. Okay. In this first attack, we have the vehicle behavior control via body control module. When the driver use the cage chain to control the door, I mean this one, the cage chain, to control the door, the cage chain sends the signal and then receives the input signal by the K-free control module and compare the ID number if it fits with the K control you in the K control unit and then we'll transmit the signal through the can I mean the can bus to the BCM so that the BCM can control the door to look or unlook so if uh, we uh, check the figure we have the K the smart key here and we have the KCU here and when we have a request of uh, uh, the K, it will be first uh, communicated to the BCM, and then we will have to look or unlock the door, to send the look or unlock the door. But we should first go through the K C U. Okay. The intelligent remote control K on the system is shown in this figure. The ID code authentication mechanism between the K and the car increased the difficulty, of course, but if we don't secure the communication on the CAN bus, it is like what we do, we did not do anything. 
So by analyzing the principle of intelligent remote K, this entry system in detail and using the vulnerabilities of the information transmission between the KCE and the BCM, this is the part that we are considering here, this one, okay, BCM directly from the canvas. Then after sorting and analyzing, after sorting and analyzing the data packet, we found out the control restriction of the door lock. In this way, we could directly skip the checkup mechanism between the K and the car and use the OBD core to send the BCM door lock control instruction. So this means that we bypass this part. Okay. We access directly to the canvas, we take the uh, information, and then we give uh, a wrong uh, decision without using the KCU. So, as I said before, we choose the Lux Gen vehicle as an experimental vehicle because it has a lot of auxiliary system functions as Asker with control, automatic transmission system, IPS, ITS, body control, and automatic parking system. So because this is why we use this. And this uh, uh, second uh, part is the implementation of what I just explained to you. I mean, the data injection and the explanation how to access to the bus can and go directly with the BCM and then have uh, to look or to turn the signal uh, for the, the door to request uh, look or unlock the door. Okay. Uh, so we did this tampering with the data dash dashboard. So, as one of the most dependent tools while driving the instruction, the instrument cluster, display the car speed, in Z speed, millage, and other information of the vehicles. The ICU module gains the data collected. I mean, this one, this one, see, so gain the data collected, and we will access to this data. We use the signal processing DSP in IC to receive CAN message, okay? And then in our experiment, the CAN message sent by the wheel sensor in the CAN, CH bus, we successfully, we successfully captured by using the CAN bus. So we captured this measurement given by the sensors of the wheel through the CAN bus, okay? And we changed this information to be displayed on the dashboard in a wrong way. This is what we want to do. And we succeed to do this experimentally on the Lexus. Okay, so here we changed the the counter. I mean, now this counter it mar uh, it show uh, 161 kilometer hour. The engine speed was 7,400 turns, and the engine temperature was zero, as you can see this one is zero, temperature is zero. How it can be? So this is the wrong information that we displayed on the dashboard of this vehicle. So this is the first attack that we did. I mean, on the dashboard, we took the information and we sent other information to the dashboard to make the driver very lost about what he is seeing. Okay, so this is a very uh, crucial attack on the vehicles. Okay. The second attacks, attacking vehicle lights and wipers. We found that BCM, which is the body control module, had no security check mechanism when it was transmitting data with other SEU. I mean electronic control unit using the canvas. When the driver needs to use light or wiper, the lights 
Wiper Combiner Switch Module, which is in our case a column SW ECU, sends the drivers and, and tension to the BCM. So it will send the driver and tension to the BCM. This one. When BCM receives the signal of the column SW, the information is transmitted to the front control module. So this BCM send the information to the front control module okay, through the canvas. And the front control module is used to control the normal work of the light and the wiper. As shown in this figure, we could still use the same way to steal BCU, I mean this one, packets from the CAN bus and to disguise our data. Okay, so this is the second attacks that we did also on the Lixgen car. So we have made use of the obtained data to successfully control the dashboard and lighting of the car with the exact ID. Because this is, I, I don't want to give you more detail about the, about the protocols. The first step is to find for each vehicles, for example, for each type or version of vehicles, the exact ID on which we should work. And this is not easy to, to, to obtain from the, 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 the protocols uh, circulating the data on, over the car. Okay, so uh, I will continue because I have uh, still time. The last part that I want to share with you is also another work that we did on localization and navigation in autonomous driving. So we have some traits and we have also some counter -mosier. Example that I give you here for road navigation. For example, the first figure that you have here, we have a wrong destination attack. Initial destination of vehicle is B, the attacker modifies secretly the longitude and the latitude of the destination before navigation map up plans a route to manipulate the victim's destination and a route. So this is before we start. So instead of going to B, we want to that the vehicle go to C. The second attack is the malicious wipe once attack. We decide to go, instead of going, for example, here, through the plus or the area C, we want to go through D. So change the longitude and the latitude of wipe once before navigation map, apps, plan, route, to manipulate the victims of wipe once and the route. So this is, what we can do on the localization system now and on the road, okay? So here I want to share with you our uh, work, I mean our uh, summary about the methods that we found for the local in general, but in vehicles. We can have, for example, the surface attack, attack surface, I mean, GPS localization, or the hot de high definition maps. In this, we can have also the attack points. What are the attack points? I mean, the attack points are GPS, traffic information and map updates. But what are now the attack scheme that we found? We have GPS spoofing attack. I mean, GPS spoofing aims to manipulate. This is critical. It can be done on two uh, steps. The first is to fabricate false GPS signals, identical to the legitimate one. 
but with enough power to override the real GPS signal. We have also GPS jamming attack. We have also GPS replay attack. Uh, more detail can be found in our published papers, but I want to be uh, uh, light for you uh, before the end of this session. We have also GPS software attack. We have also civil attack, and we have also message falsification attack. We can find this mainly a great part for GPS localization and civil attack and message falsification for HD maps. Okay, and here are the traits that we can have. And now, what are the counter measures? The counter measures are GPS signal security. For example, we have civil GPS, which is vulnerable to jamming because of the low power signals and spoofing due to the encrypted and encrypted and unauthorized signals. So we can work, for example, to improve the security of the signal of GPS. For example, optimize the GPS signal system, enhance the power, add new civilian uh, L band, for example, uh, we should, for example, the higher carrier uh, frequency than the existing one. We can use, for example, the spreading uh, spectrum. We can also encrypt GPS signal. So all these are some uh, optimization for GPS signal in order to... We can also uh, use GPS ground control and monitor the system. We have here uh, several solutions. We can also use GPS software security because we have a lot of flow in this software and we can improve it. For example, we can uh, intervene in GPS receiver and uh, exploit the vulnerabilities in the software in order to do some improvements because we know that the GPS can be destroyed in the software itself. We have also the HD map security where we put for what three methods, for example, ensure accuracy of data collection, use a safe update framework and apply a safe cloud platform. So we can have all this uh, uh, Attack street and counter measure in GPS and uh, local. Okay, so in order to do our attacks, we cut the process of spoofing attack into several several tasks. Okay, and these tasks are also cut into several subtasks. So it is very uh, hard, but I will try to uh, do uh, the, the, the clarification clearly. We choose three navigation map apps from different vendors. In our spoofing attack, we propose three illustrative effects. Remote deceiving drivers into reaching the wrong destination. This is the first one. Remotely cheating drivers into passing a malicious Y point or malicious place and remotely tracking drivers in real time. So this is what we want to do in our attack. To this end, we propose the first task, which is remove the, 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 the shell. We utilize the APK scan, in this one, the APK scan, PK ID, to check the type of target APK's shell. So this is a Java uh, cross-platform that is uh, used for Android APK, okay? We have also task two in order to bypass the signature verification because the principle of signature verification is to check if the signature are consistent or not. And then we have also the task three, which is the analyze, analyzing of decompiled code. 
we have also this step aims to discover the k functions and the parameters used in the plan route we have the task four which inject malicious code the then we have task five and the, the subtask, I mean, that you have here in the, in the right and in the left, okay? But I will go only to uh, to the, the main principle, I mean the task themselves. Task six, for example, will promote a malicious service for implementation of attacks. For example, we use Tomcat to build a remote malicious server and we utilize NAT, the protocol NAT, NAT 123, to set up a network address translation. Okay, so NAT is professional internet port mapping software that can help users without a public network IP. And the last uh, task is uh, task seven, which conduct attack as long as the repackage app is used under the network in the network so these are uh, the scheme of our attacks now let's go to uh, the results of our attacks as i said before the experimental environment in our experiment the attack implemented are divided into three groups according to the target navigation map because we can target several ma navigation maps, for example. Generally, the environment of each group consists of malicious server, a NAT transversal server, and the shared navigation map app. We develop the malicious server with the Tomcat, Tom 7, Tomcat 7 and set up the NAT transversal. For this, to this aim, I mean, we use it Android app. The two first Android app that we target are CLD Nav, Navix CM 8.3, this one. This is the figure A, this. We shoot this app. And in this attack, we attack the Navy dog, okay? Which are two different app of uh, uh, Android. Android in vehicle infotainment. And the third one that I will present later after is Baidu Car Life 44. It is also an app, Android one, uh, and all in order to attack the Luxgen U5 IVI, infotainment vehicle uh, uh, module. Okay, so this first one show the results, I mean this one, show the results of attacking CLD Navic CM. The left figure display a normal route and the one of the right show the route after being attacked. So we can see that Dingxian dormitory is chosen as the waypoints. This one is chosen as the waypoints. Okay. This is from this to this, okay? And the other one is this, okay? So I am talking about these figures, okay? Is chosen as the waypoint and high tank dormitory is chosen as the destination. High tank dormitory as the destination in the normal route. After attack, the route have been changed into a new route with the waypoint and destination is different, okay? So the source is Gideon University, but the destination are different and the boy points are different. In the second group, we repeat the same previous process, okay? But with Navy, Navy Dog, this is another, okay, uh, up, from Android, and we also change the path of the road that the, the driver is taking. And you can see that we increase, for example, uh, 
the kilometers, the, uh, the, the distance. And the last one, the last one that I want also to uh, share with you is this one, which is uh, fabricated on Baidu, Baidu uh, car life. Okay, so here we have the pre-attack and here we have the attack itself. Okay, the pre-attack and post-attack on the IVI screen. Okay. So that we have attacked several up of Android dedicated to the car. In, uh, I mean, to the Lixian car. Okay. So I think I finished. This work have been published in IEEE Wireless Communication Magazine in 2019, just one year uh, after my start, uh, I mean, my starting working with the, my, the team uh, of my colleagues and our students. And as a conclusion, still we have a lot of work to do on in car communication to secure the canvas. Either we can add directly some security mechanisms, or either we can do some monitoring of the canvas in the in a, in a, in, a, in the in vehicle. Okay, so there are a lot of a lot of work still remaining to secure. Uh, drivers to secure autonomous cars and to secure our life. Thank you very much for your attention. And if there are any questions, don't hesitate. I finished my work, my talk. Thank you. Thank you, sir. It was a question, and you helped everyone to articulate new security aspects of communicating vehicles. Now it's time for day. So participants, if you have any queries, feel free to ask in the chat box. Okay, sir. The first question is, what will be the effect of such energy efficient monitoring on current IoT system? It is question for me? Yes, sir. Please, could you repeat? I was a little bit disturbed. Yes, please. What will be the effect of such energy efficient monitoring on current IoT system? So efficient monitoring means that uh, we don't take a lot of uh, computing processing and we don't take a lot of energy consumption from the nodes themselves because the nodes in IoT system are dedicated to the application, like, for example, monitoring a uh, fire, monitoring pipeline, monitoring uh, uh, a firm, monitoring uh, uh, animals, and so on. So... This is a very small uh, IoT device, and these IoT devices are not dedicated uh, in their uh, principal uh, function to monitor. And we don't want to have uh, extra nodes monitoring, so we want only to use our nodes in the network as the monitors. This is why we want to um, uh, uh, conceive protocols for monitoring, which are very light in terms of communication and in terms of energy consumption. I don't know if it is uh, this is the question that uh, uh, you want me to answer for. Thank you, sir. Uh, so I think comments are addressed. Now I invite Professor Vijida Manoj, counselor, IEEE SBNSSC, for the felicitation. Over to you, okay. ma'am. Uh, good evening to one and all. Uh, can you hear me? 
Sajima, can you hear me, Sajima? Yes, ma'am. Yeah. Uh, good evening to one and all, and uh, I take this opportunity to uh, thank Abdul Rahman sir for his uh, wonderful class on IoT and vehicle security. Actually, this is the uh, I, I can say this is the trend that is coming up. IoT is coming up, and then we have can. Uh, uh, car area networks and all those things and along with that he spoke a lot about the, uh, the security issues and how it can be uh, dealt with so it was actually a very wonderful uh, like we have a lot of rain happening and all those things but without any disturbance we were able to listen to you clearly and uh, I think there would be many people who would like, actually like to uh, get into this field and then do a lot of research also so actually, sir, we are, we actually expect a lot of support from your side because I think this is a growing field, and many in this uh, many people are working in this field, and might be the ones who had listened to your uh, lecture would really feel uh, happy to know what is the trend that is there and uh, get a maximum support from your side. And uh, I'm also happy that uh, VTS has come forward with a good DLP this year, and uh, wishing all you, uh, wishing all the best to all of you there. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Now, for a photograph, I request everyone to turn on your cameras. Tower, can we move? Okay. So let me invite Mr. Atul P, Chairman, VTS SBC NSC. For the deliverance of vote of thanks. Over to you, Atul. Hello, everyone. Uh, am I audible? Yes, Atul, you are audible. Okay. Good afternoon, everyone. Respected Professor Abdrahim Ben Sliman, Dr. Bijuki, Professor Vijida Manoj, Dr. Ajay Babu, and all the participants. It is a honor for me to propose a vote of thanks on this occasion. I, on behalf of Vikla Technology Society Student Branch Chapter in Nessus College of Engineering, and beyond behalf, extend a hearty vote of thanks to everyone for being a part of this program. A big thank you to Professor Abdrahim Ben Sliman for accepting our request for the lecture program and enlightening us with this knowledge. I wish to express our sincere thanks to Dr. Biju K for taking out time from his busy schedule and gracing our event. I also wish to express my gratitude to Professor Vijita Manoj for her support to make this, make this webinar successful. I had also thank our chapter advisor, Dr. Ajay Babu for his guidance and encouragement at every point of time in organizing the event. I take this opportunity to thank Mr. Swadisri Jairaj and the team of IEEE for their cooperation and support. I must thank the whole team of VTS, SPC, and SSE who work hard to make this event successful. Finally, I would like to thank all the attendees for being part of our program. Once again, I thank all of you for being with us this afternoon. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. So let's conclude today's session. The feedback form is provided in the chat box. Participants, please fill it out. Once again, thank you all for attending and have a great evening. Thank you very much. Have a good day. Bye bye. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank you, sir.